Okay, I think I'm starting video number four today because these are long-term tests with batteries. I cannot just make one video after another. It just takes too long, you know. You wouldn't get a video for four or five days then. So I need to start them in parallel. And this is all filmed with one camera and now with two cameras here. And I hope I can Frankenstein this all together later on <laughs> and make really four videos out of it as I would like. So, um, yeah, well, welcome back here to the off Crypto Garage, Andy's night shift. It's 9.30 p.m. and I'm starting a new video and a new project here. Little switchboard configuration, you know already what comes. We've got the um, fuse holders in here. Six of them for two solar, uh, for three solar strings. Positive, negative for each solar string goes onto these bus bars and from there it goes to our charge controller. And this is basically to, um, well, to, um, to fix the problem I have here in my, in my garage roof at the moment. We are still having all the crocodile clamps connected to our solar panel strings and they all connect to the bare wire of our line which feeds back to the solar charge controllers. And now, well, like today, you know, we had 37 amps outside. Uh, one, two, three, one, two, three. So it goes in here. Yeah, I think we are getting too many, too many amps at the moment for the crocodile clamps. I don't like this situation anymore. This is really not designed for being a permanent setup with these uh, crocodile cables and clamps. This is a test environment, you know. Again, I was testing perfect length. Look at this. That's why I keep all these offcuts all the time. I know exactly I need them sometimes and cable is not cheap. I mean, we've got three strings on the roof there and they make each around nine amps on full power. And this is what the crocodile clamp and the cable needs to conduct to the main cable which then goes down to our solar charge controller. It's, it's a 1.5 millimeter cable, so 10 amps is totally fine for that, but it's not a permanent solution. So I need to build this junction box here, this um, switchboard now. And then we will connect all our, all our solar panels here on this side of the switchboard. And up here goes onto our bus bars. And from there are two cables down to our meter box. So that's the plan for tonight. <laughs> this shelf is empty, but already so heavy. I'm not even sure how to mount this whole switchboard up there. Okay, so let's take out. That looks a bit melted here already, but this was from a previous test. I remember that. That's not from the solar. There was a previous test, believe me or not. <laughs> okay, here's our common negative tied together in a clamp. And this one has three pluses. So this is the string number one, number two and number three here. Cable here going back to the switchboard there. It's a four millimeter cable. That's enough because we are not pushing more than 30 amps or something through it. With all three strings are working perfectly fine on their maximum power output, it would be around 30 amps. And we've got a four millimeter cable here. So that is all right, that is still okay. We will never push 30 amps here, never. So I think what I'm going to do is I will mount the switchboard here and this top beam like this. It's not the super best solution. If I mount it here somewhere, that's not good either. No, I think I mount it up here. It's still accessible. There's enough room. And the cables are long enough to fit into the fuses here as well. Hopefully. I have to check this out first. 
uh, the cables are too short. They are, they are they are not they are not long enough to feed into the switchboard and onto the fuses. So I need to solder them all a little bit longer. I need to make some connections and solder them together and make them a little bit longer. Then it's originally I had a different idea to connect these cables down here, but um, well this was without fuses. But we are getting five strings on each side of the roof eventually and you really want to fuse this shit, you know? Because if one string goes berserk and the other four feeding into this one string, you really want to have a fuse which disconnects this faulty string then. So I need to have fuses in between and this is the correct way to do it. I just have to extend these cables now a bit. So here what I basically did is I was so taking these two cables here and I twisted them together like this. So we have a bit of mechanical strength already, you know. So look, look this is already mechanically connected now and then I have soldered them together. But um, well this is only a one millimeter cable here, you know. If you have a four millimeter cable, two of them twisted together, they take they take a lot of heat from the from the soldering iron and a lot of solder. Jeez. And then up there where the cables are just hanging like this, you know, and you have to solder them together. It is all but it's done. It's all done. I put some double heat shrink over it now and then we tuck this all away in the conduit and forget about it. I will not talk about this again. I will not show anyone. Well, we keep this as our secret, okay? I've taken out the bus bars and the DIN rail here, including fuses, including cabling, to mount the to mount the enclosure. Here, yeah, the switchboard at the ceiling here, and we've got the cables coming through. Everything is terminated with ferrules, but I have no friggin' idea what is what anymore here. So we really have to wait until tomorrow, until the light comes back, and. Both cameras are empty. I'm running on 3% here on the GoPro. This is not going to happen anymore tonight. And it's also a quarter past 11 p.m. So I think we postpone this until tomorrow, seven o'clock or so. And then I'll be back here on the ladder and we connect the cables to the... This is all long enough now. Oh, fuck you. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully it is. Yeah, yeah I've got enough now. I, I really, <laughs> that is, I still haven't bought any heat shrink with numbers on it as you suggested the last time. I really like this idea and I should do it really. I'll put this on my list. Next time we will have heat shrink with numbers. Makes so much sense. And I thought, well, how long can it take to cable such a switchboard with six fuses inside? Mount this to the ceiling there, feed the cables in, connect the cables, and you're done. An hour? Hour ten, maybe? Well, this was two and a half hours ago. I'm done. All right, I guess we see us tomorrow then. <laughs> Good. What a total nightmare. Well, it is early in the morning now. Bright outside, and I'm missing out on solar. Potentially on... 21 watts or so. Well, we need to measure and find the pairs of our strings now with all these cables here Because I can't remember which one is what. I think I still know what the first string was because we haven't extended one of these cables Here's my multimeter So I can identify string number one and then the other two are a bit hit and miss But let's see light Just checking again yeah, 95 volts. These are positive, negative. I've got uh, no fuses inside the holders here at the moment, so uh, everything is isolated. We have to test again afterwards. Okay, let's try and find the other, the next two strings. I'll try this one and this one. Oh, 92 volts. Correct polarity. So this is our next minus. So I'm not sure if this is now string number two or string number three, but I'll just connect them at the moment. Cable is too long, need to shorten it. 
And just for the peace of mind, we measure the last pair as well. I have to measure it anyway because of polarity. I need to find 95 volts, wrong polarity. So this is the negative here. All right. This one goes in here, our positive. Yeah, the cables are a bit thick here in this area. I don't know why. <laughs> Stupid me, really. Okay, so now we have all connected and we measure again string number one. I can turn on the light. 95, string number two, 92, string number 95. Okay, I think we have mixed up these two strings because the 92 one should be the third one, right? This should be our string number three. But I'm not 100% sure. I leave it as it is for the moment. It's not too, it's not too, you know. And then we've got the 16 amp fuses. And we can close the first one. And we measure here on our bus bar again. If we have the right pol polarity. Yeah, 95, okay. Second one. three and third one 95 again okay so this is all nice so we can actually parallel them now yeah this is all good so we've got 94 95 volts open circuit voltage so the only thing we need to do now is to um, insert here our outgoing cable to the Chola charge controller and I have to put a little hole here in the box again I should have done this before all right let's see how this goes well the main problem is now the cables are too short as well so I have to solder here some extensions on it it uh, fits actually to our bus bars up here uh, it's always too short or too long yeah okay I'll do this right now and um, also I have tried to push these cables here under the Dean rail because eventually we will have four more fuses in here and you don't want to have cables in the way so always try to get your cables under the Dean rail so they are nicely tucked away and then and then you don't have any problems later on when you put more fuses in here on these um, incoming cables now I've connected one of these long seven meter long cables here to the why is this actually so i've connected my long solar cable now to one of the cables going from there from the junction box all the way down to the solar charge controller to our breaker over here and i just want to measure and ensure the polarity of the solar panels now again to make sure i've got the right cable on the right contact here we don't want to reverse feed these solar charge controllers with solar they should be okay with that but i yeah i better double check again that everything is okay you don't want to cause any dramas here okay so if i connect here on the positive it should beep it does Okay, and the other one is negative, there's nothing. Okay, I definitely have got the right polarity. So that is all good and confirmed. We can connect the incoming, now the outgoing cables now to the switchboard. All right, I think we are done. Okay, so I'm connecting one of the strings to the bus bars here. So we've got the 95 volts. And then we go back in here and make sure we've got the 95 volts up here with the correct polarity as well. 99 we have from this string. Okay, polarity is correct. 
positive left, negative right. Just confirm this down here, positive, negative. Just one last check. That's the cable going to the positive here. All right, I think we can turn it on. It's good, no spark, no smoke. <laughs> Alrighty, let's have a look on the mobile phone and see if it connects. West Roof, 21 watts. There it is, 21. <laughs> nice. Okay, I just put you on the screen recorder here. So next step would be turning this one off. We go to zero and pushing the next string in. Just want to test them individually. 101 volts. And it's ramping up. See if you get another 21 watts here from string number two. I think this is string number three actually, so I have to swap these ones around. 21, come on. Ah, we missed the 21. <laughs> there it is, 21. Okay, so that's working. And the third one. 101 volts seems to be the correct polarity which is nice 12 watts 27 okay 27 volts all right just checking on the cables here again but this is all double and triple checked this is all good okay so now we can really connect them all in parallel here and we should see an increase now to 100 watts, maybe, maybe. 85 and the total network power is 160. So it splits up now between east and west roof at the moment. So that is all good. Finally, where's my, um, oh, here. Alright guys, so far this unspectacular f up here with the solar input west roof, finally we got it done. Little bit of trouble with the extending of these cables there, but eventually I got it all done. And it's all working and we are now happily producing 81 watts here on the west roof early in the morning, 924. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. Stay charged and safe and we will see us again in the next video coming out very soon. More battery tests here on the workbench. Two testers running 24 seven here. Lots of things to test. There's so much to ask, so much to explore. Thanks again for watching guys. See you then, bye bye.